ago. The year of enormous rage. That's what the Southern Poverty Law Center has called this last year, the, the year of enormous rage. For the first time in five years, we have seen hate groups increase in the United States by 14%. We have seen hate crimes, reports of hate crimes, increase by threefold against Sikh and Muslim Americans this election season. And we know that Sikh and Muslim Americans are five times more likely to be targets of hate crimes than before 9-11. So what does that look like? It looks like kids bullied at schools during recess. It looks like Sikh and Muslim Americans being stopped two, three times at airports. It looks like racial slurs on city streets. It looks like hate violence, the beating of bodies, the breaking of bone. I am um, incredibly saddened to report that after 15 years of activism, I became an activist like many of us in the Sikh and Muslim American communities in the aftermath of September 11th. So after 15 years of activism, our communities actually feel less safe than we did even in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. Because today, we live in a climate where political leaders can say the unthinkable, can denigrate Muslims, Sikhs, immigrants, women, refugees in ways that were unthinkable before. The year of enormous rage. That is the, the moment that we're, we're living in. And that's precisely why I believe that the call of our times is revolutionary love. I believe that love is in the zeitgeist. We heard Cory Booker talk about love on the stage of the DNC when he called our nation to be a nation not of tolerance but of love. We heard William Barber, Reverend Barber, on the stage of the DNC saying that we need to shock our hearts to love again. We heard Hillary Clinton talk about love trumping hate. We see love in the zeitgeist. I think we see love in the zeitgeist because people are reaching for language to respond to the extreme hate in our political landscape. They're reaching for language that is just as powerful, just as potent as the hate that we are seeing. The last time that we saw love in national discourse take center stage was during the civil rights era, when we had leaders, faith leaders like Dr. King front and center. The language of love has been relegated to the sidelines since then, but we see it we see it returning this election year. I believe this is not just a trend. I believe the call of our times is revolutionary love. Love beyond our tribe. So to be able to look upon the faces of people who do not look like us and say, sister, brother, I cannot live if you are dying. I cannot stand by if you are suffering. But this means also being able to look upon the faces of others who have disagreed with us or who even hurt us who even have taken everything away from us. On the 15 year anniversary of 9-11, can we look upon the faces of the 19 hijackers and say, brothers, yes, brothers, you, you were lost. You did what you did out of a lack of love, material, economic, spiritual, political. Can we look upon the faces of perpetrators of hate violence Frank Roque, who murdered Bobir Singh Sodhi, an uncle, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. Wade Michael Page, the white supremacist who walked into a Sikh Gurdwara in Oak Creek, Wisconsin in 2012 in a horrific mass shooting. Can we look upon their faces and say, brothers, you were lost. You did what you did out of a lack of love. The atrocities you committed we will never forget because forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness, I believe, is freedom from hate. 